Something that happened recently, I think this morning in the news, yes. Pope Francis saying that Catholic priests can now begin blessing gay couples. But can't a priest bless anyone? So why why hone in and, and harp on this? Does it set a precedent for something else? Like what's going on here with that? Yeah, well, you hit the nail on the head. I have said, you know, I've been a priest for 35 years. I don't think I've ever refused to give a blessing to an individual who came up to me and said, I would like your blessing. And why do people ask for a blessing? Because they want to follow God's ways more closely. They want to become more, more, more holy. So an individual who's in a same-sex relationship, if they, if they really want to follow Christ, they know the difference between a God-ordained marriage and one that's not, they're going to ask a blessing to, to, to do what's right. And we would bless them. But to bless a couple, for somebody to say, like they're saying now, oh, well, you can do this, but as long as it doesn't look like you're condoning a, a gay marriage, how in the world do you do that? How is it not going to look like exactly that for people? How is it not going to happen now that that activists for, for, for gay marriage and, and are not going to use this as an open door to, to, to literally besiege priests across the country and then start complaining about those that won't do it? I mean, this is going to cause now a, a whole range of, 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 of protest and outrage across the world. This is really a bad move. I don't think that this is all by accident because I mean common sense tells you people are going to be confused. Good people who are making sacrifices every day to live their faith are hurt by things like this. And what, what is troublesome to me is that you'll see in some of the coverage of what happened this morning, it'll say, uh, oh, well theologians have explained that technically this is okay. That's not how you lead the church. You don't lead it by well, some elite group of theologians telling you this is okay, that's okay. The people of God know the faith. The people of God know what God has said about marriage. So let's stop confusing them. Let's stop insulting them when they're making so many sacrifices in their lives to stay in God's plan. And then you see religious leaders throwing God's plan out the window. And you are a victim of cancel culture yourself. Right. And recently we saw that um, the Pope relieved Bishop Strickland. And that is something that, you know, a lot of conservative Catholics, and I've heard a lot of them talk about even second guessing if they want to stay in the Catholic Church. Like a lot of people, that, that kind of behavior drives people away from the church. Yes. What is your response to people who might be thinking of leaving the Catholic Church over things like this, maybe decisions of the Pope, disagreeing with the Pope? What's your, uh, your many, response to Many that? people have said to me that because of what the Pope did to me, to Bishop Strickland, because of, of the things he's saying that are confusing people about marriage, that they feel like they need to leave the Church. And my response is very simple. Don't give your enemies so much power over you that to make you lose your faith. What we possess, if we're a believing Catholic, we possess the faith, we possess the sacraments of the Church as a very sacred belief. Don't let your enemy deprive you of that. The faith is clear. The faith that we believe today as Catholics doesn't come from the mouth of the Pope. It comes from 2,000 years of clear teaching. So we can be confused about something the Pope says or does. We can even be hurt by it, but we never have to be confused about what the faith says. It is clear. We need to hold fast to it. And don't let those who are trying to cancel some of us stand in the way of you enjoying your faith. That's, that would be my response. Yeah, because the Pope, you know, he's human, and humans can make mistakes as well. And I think Absolutely. maybe people maybe forget that, you know. You know, you make a good point. This is a good moment for Catholics to, re, uh, to relearn in some cases, and for those outside the Catholic Church to also come to a better understanding of what we do and don't believe about the Pope. We do not believe the Pope is an oracle of God, you know, where everything he says automatically has to be followed. We don't believe that at all. We believe the Pope is, a, is a, a man, a sinner like the rest of us, who, but he's been given primary responsibility to teach the faith throughout the world. So that doesn't mean he's not going to make a mistake. That doesn't mean you can't dis you disagree with his opinions on things. It means that when he teaches, again, like I was saying earlier, what the church has always taught, this 2,000 year tradition, when he teaches that, obviously, People need to listen and adhere to that. That's why he teaches us. But, you know, Jesus said, my teaching is not my own. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will not speak on his own. So if even Jesus and the Holy Spirit are giving a message they received, and they received it from the Father, well then how much more with us, right? And even the Pope. We're not speaking our own message, and we've got to make it clear that we're speaking the message of the faith, and people understand the faith. They can tell the difference between 
uh, what God sets up as marriage or any other topic and what uh, someone's opinion might be. How about the, the recent revelations that the FBI is spying on traditional Catholics, you know, Latin mass goers? Why them? Why is that? What's going on with that? Okay, so it has been a disturbing thing to see the FBI going after traditional Catholics, even with the, apparently the cooperation of some church officials, which doesn't surprise me. We have at Priests for Life launched a FOIA request of the FBI, and we want to know what's going on behind this. What are, what are they saying and doing and circulating among themselves? Who has been targeted? Who in the church has been cooperating with them on this? We have just launched that FOIA request, and if they don't respond adequately, we will turn it into a lawsuit. Why I think it's happening, I, think it's, I don't think the FBI cares about the niceties of Catholic dogma or liturgical worship or the Latin Mass. I think what they notice, and I can verify that this is true, that the Catholics who will tend to be what we would call more conservative, traditional, orthodox, or attend the Latin Mass, are going to be the kind of Catholics, and I'm not saying there aren't Catholics all across the board who are like this, but they're going to tend to be more the kind of people who are going to take their faith into politics. They're going to take their faith and say, we have to structure society, pass our laws, or render our court decisions in accordance with what we believe. And I think that the Biden administration and the Democrat Party generally are literally and I think rightly concerned that there are going to be more and more of these believers who take their faith into the public square, into public policy. Because if we do that, if we have laws and court decisions that line up with what the Catholic faith teaches, the Democrat agenda is going to be out the window. On the topic of taking your faith into politics, the abortion yes. issue. Yes, yes. Are we winning or losing on that? I mean, I know that Roe v. Wade was overruled. Yes. But now you have states trying to push in this, you know, radical yes. pro-abortion agenda. Well, of course, I'm, I'm very much involved in these state battles, these state amendments. Uh, that The other side is trying to put unlimited abortion into the constitutions of these various states. They are trying to spin a narrative that because their ballot initiatives went well in four states and ours did not go well in three other states, that somehow Americans are turning away from the pro-life position and embracing abortion. That is not the case. That narrative is a false narrative for various reasons. But even if you, if you take those seven states as victories for the other side, and one has to be careful even with that because they're very different among themselves and they do not mean that people have embraced abortion on demand. But even if one says, oh, they had seven victories, okay, we have twice as many states that are now protecting the unborn from conception. So how are we not winning more than they are? And not only, and those aren't the only states that have advanced protections for the unborn. My own state of Florida, we've made great progress in, in now getting laws that protect them starting at, at six weeks, and, and other states have done so as well. So as I look at it, we're winning. You see courts that in the past would have automatically struck down pro-life laws now upholding them. Indiana, Georgia, North Carolina, various other states, South Carolina. And why are the courts upholding these pro-life laws? Because of Dobbs. Because Roe is no longer precedent. The precedent now is the people want to protect the unborn. There's no constitutional reason why they can't. I am therefore convinced we're winning and we're going to counteract this, this narrative the other side is trying to spin, that it's a losing issue, and we're going to encourage candidates not to run away from the abortion issue. We give them talking points, we give them training, we give them help, and I think we're going to see that the American people want less abortion, not more. And that's one of our key messages in this election. Do you think that Catholic groups like the SSPX are doing things right? Well, I respect all these different movements within the church, and uh, I am not uh, d directly involved with uh, them. But when you see, I mean, I've met a lot of individuals who say, look, you know, we, we love our faith, we love the liturgy that we, uh, that we grew up with. And um, the bottom line is people in the church deserve respect. The same kind of respect that the Pope is saying, oh, you know, gay people deserve respect. I agree, everybody deserves respect. But that's the point. It's only the, the more conservative, traditional uh, people who are not getting that respect. And, and what I mean is, if they take a, a stand or if they voice an opinion, we should be able within the church to disagree, to criticize our leaders, 
and to do so in a respectful way. We respect authority, we don't respect the abuse of authority, but if we have a different idea of which way the church should go, let's hash it out and let's talk in an honest, open, healthy way. If you can't give any criticism of authority and any such criticism ends up getting you canceled, that's not the behavior of a healthy church, that's the behavior of a cult. So I think that we need to, with all these groups within the church, listen to what they're trying to say, respect them, and then hash out our, hash out our concerns in an open, honest way. Why is the Vatican looking to suppress the Latin Mass? You know, there are various theories about this, and my own is that the Latin Mass, and I've been, by the way, as unlike most priests my age, I've been privileged to learn how to say that Mass uh, with all the necessary permissions and so forth. Uh, and it's really a different experience for the priest as well as for the congregation. And that Mass really reflects that there are absolutes. There are moral absolutes. There's doctrinal absolutes. We are sinners. It reflects very much the humility and obedience we have to have to God. Simple thing. There are many more genuflections in that Mass. And what is that? What does the left hate about that? The left hates that because they are trying to build a world where everyone is his or her own God, his or her own source of moral direction, his or her own justification for whatever they want to do in life. And it's a rejection of the truth of God. We can't say a man is a man or a woman is a woman because for 50 years we've been saying a baby's not a baby. That we throw out the truth of God. The Latin Mass expresses be perhaps better than any other liturgical action exactly the opposite, that there is a truth that God has revealed. It's clear to us. We submit to it, the bowing, the reverence, the genuflecting. We submit to his truth. That's exactly what the left and woke culture reject. I think that's a big part of the reason. How can people follow you and keep up with what you're doing? I welcome everyone to get involved with us, and, and uh, we are at endabortion.us. That's our main website. All the different branches of our ministry are there. I'm on social media at FR Frank Pavone. And uh, in regard to people connecting with us, let me just make this final point that the best rebuke against those who cancel us is our success. We have to stay, stick together, we have to rally together, and when people, even in the church, as well as in the government, say, we have to stop that movement, we have to kill that work, our rebuke is, hey, we're still, not only still standing, we're flourishing because the people of God are supporting our work, and I invite people to help me push back against those who have canceled me by saying, hey, we're doing the work of God, we're saving lives, we're healing hearts from abortion, and our success is the best rebuke to them.